Today, we've got a 76 MGB in the shop. So this is a recent purchase for the owner, and she found me and wanted me to take a look at it from bumper to bumper, look it over and see how good of a purchase it actually was, and to address any potential issues I find. And she did notice one or two minor things like the brakes squeal an awful lot coming to a stop, which is probably just junk pads. We'll have to look at that. But let's get this thing up in the air. So the owner of this car bought it, I think, off the internet and came out of Wisconsin, so it's not an Ohio car. But being a Wisconsin car means it's just as likely to have rust in it. But a cursory inspection of the outside, it doesn't look like it's ever been rusty, but we'll find out here in a second. But we'll start out with underneath here. We'll take a quick look at suspension, look for rust, stuff like that. So it looks like... Now, being a 76, it wouldn't have been originally equipped with a sway bar unless it was optioned. But it looks like here, it's actually been retrofitted. You can see brand new front portions of the control arms here and new brackets, all that stuff. So that's a good thing because uh, that was the, that's the worst part about the 75 and 76 cars is didn't have the sway bars unless they were optioned and here in the states most cars were bought off the lot rather than ordered and if they were all on the lot they didn't have any options usually but you know we look at wheel bearings feel good not extra slop in them our boots here look good rack boots look pretty good Those wheel bearings feel pretty good. And looking on the back side here, it's got new caliper, newer calipers and hoses. And looking underneath here, this all looks really nice and clean, especially back in here. This is where you really need to look at them. So the rubber bumper cars will tend to rust right in here first. They didn't do quite as good a job sealing this corner right here on the late cars. But in looking through here, that all looks all factory and all looks clean on that side as well as this side. So I don't see any evidence of any rust repairs done. Everything looks factory. It still has the factory bolts holding the seats in, all that stuff. So I think this is actually a genuine rust-free car, which is a good thing, because rust is the number one enemy, especially in this part of the country. I don't see any leaking out of that sh shock or out of this one. Now, uh, the fuel pump has been bypassed and they put on an aftermarket rotary style pump. Now with th these, you have to wonder what the fuel pressure is because you really don't want, you know, five, six, seven pounds of pressure. Now we do have a problem here where the thing's obviously been towed before and had a hook or a chain wrapped around here so that's been crimped off a bit. So the left rear brake's probably not doing a whole lot. Tank looks pretty good. This stuff like this is fairly normal. See that all the time. You know, depends on how worried you want to get about that stuff. I, don't, I personally don't get too excited about this. 
that's there to keep the springs quiet, but we can fix that. And the exhaust system looks fairly new. And this thing does have a three in the one header on it instead of the original manifold setup. Looks like the slave cylinder is fairly new. It's obviously had a clutch put in it probably at some time, which the mileage, you would expect that. I forget what the mileage is exactly. I think 65,000 if I remember correctly. But one of the telltale signs is this clip here. While it is actually connected, that's not the bolt it's supposed to be on. It's supposed to be on the bolt way at the top. And actually the bolt it's supposed to go on isn't even in there. And obviously it's got a little bit of a leak in the, in the transmission, which is normal. You never hardly ever see one that doesn't do that. Same thing with the pinion. Almost never see one that's not damp here. So we'll check the diff fluid, see how full it is. Check the oil in the transmission, see how full it is. Top them off if need be. And then we'll pull the, the wheels and look at the brakes. We got all the wheels off and it looks like this car has been serviced and kept up. The uh, brake shoes are fairly new. Wheel cylinders are fairly new. Now they did uh, drill out the drum screws and didn't actually try to get them out of there, but that's not really a big problem because that really only, you know, the wheel holds the drum on fine. You don't have to have those in there. Now on the front, I think I figured out why they're squealing so bad. Once I got all the clips out, they're all gummed up pretty bad. Turns out somebody went pretty nuts with the brake lube on the back side of the pads. So that stuff's probably gotten all into the front side of the pad and has contaminated the pad. So what we'll do, probably throw a fresh set of new pads on this, clean the rotor, and maybe do a light scuff with some Scotch-Brite, and then rebed the new pads in after I clean up all this crap here. And then she should be perfectly good. So I got all the brakes done. Went ahead and scuffed the rear shoes and drums really quick just to break the glaze. Got the new, got the calipers all cleaned up. Got new pads on there and scuffed the rotors. And the other thing I like to do while we've got these off is check the date codes on the tires. Now the date code, you'll see this DOT here. Anything made after 2000 will have a four digit code just like this at the end of all these. Now that stands for the 23rd week of 2008, which means these tires are 14 years old. Now, looking at them, they don't appear to be dry rotted, but that would be something that I would definitely advise the owner to strongly consider a new set of tires at that age. So obviously, this car must have been stored inside all the time, or these tires wouldn't look this good at that age. But you know, if you were to take this thing into a tire store to say, I want them rotated, check the balance or anything, they will refuse to touch them. Because actually the, the silver supercharged car, he just tried to have his rebalanced and his tires were about the same age and they just refused to touch them. So he just purchased new tires for his car. So this car actually looks really, really good from like 10 feet away. And the body is actually super straight, like it's never actually had any real body work done to it. But it has been painted a couple of times. It was originally, I believe, Tahiti Blue. And at some point it was painted, a, 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 at least part of it was painted a metallic blue, because that door was once metallic blue. And then it was painted red over top of that. But unfortunately, as nice as it looks, they did a not so great a job prepping the paint. They actually taped around everything. And um, 
didn't take any of the trim off and didn't sand these edges very well. So it's peeling back in these corners and back in here on both sides. The other side's actually looking a lot worse here. But the owner understands what she has. She knows about it and said the seller was 100% honest about those things before she bought it. So it was no surprise to her. And she paid the right price for this car for something this solid. And in this kind of condition, even I wouldn't worry about none of that for what she actually ended up giving for it. So we have now topped off the transmission and the rear axle, which both of them took like an ounce or two. So, and now we'll get it back on the ground and look under the bonnet. All right, so the engine compartment does let this car down a little bit. Obviously, there's been a leak in the coolant leak in the cap there. So we need to look and see if it was dirty or if it's a bad cap or whatever. And now, personally, I don't like it when people paint the engine compartment it's just black like this. I understand why they did it because of a color change. They didn't want it to be blue under here. And I guess black does tend to look a little better than blue because so many other cars, American cars and stuff from the same time period, all would have been black anyway. But that's just one of my little pet peeves. I don't like that at all. But it's surprising how often we see it. Now, this car does still have the Stromberg carb on it. And it does look like the master cylinder is a newer master cylinder. And it's had the air pump taken off. And like I said, the manifold has been cut apart so that they got a three into one header on it rather than the, the cast iron manifold that chokes these things up so bad. So this thing actually doesn't drive too bad at all. It's not choked up as bad as they normally would be, but with a single carburetor, it's still choked up a little bit. But it's pretty well unmolested under here, other than those things. still has the little mileage meter on it and everything that the, the, what, the 75 and 76 cars had. So... I do have to look at the carburetor a little bit. It doesn't quite idle right, and more than likely, the chokes probably warped. They almost always are if they haven't been worked on in a while. So, there's that. And even the interior on this thing is pretty decent condition. Now, it's had these seat covers here that are non-factory seat covers, but that's, that's a personal preference thing whether you like it or not. I kind of, in some ways, I really do like like it in the fact that it makes it stand out a little bit from other cars. I just am not particularly crazy about this shade of blue without anything else in the interior to match it. But whoever did it must have liked it. And then the other thing that they got is they put a piece of carpet right there and moved the hazard switch to the side of the console there. Now this thing does have turn signals that don't work. And one of the first things you do when the turn signals aren't working is you can flip that hazard switch a few times. Because usually when they're not working, it's because of that. Because you're not getting the power coming through there properly. Because of bad connection and, and flipping it a few times will usually make them work.